exam, um, trying to um, uh, trying to um, um, make a schedule. So you're going to, for example, um, read the uh, uh, read the questions for three minutes, and then uh, you're going to uh, that's just what I'm doing. This I'm going to multitask. Uh, so uh, try and uh, read the questions for three minutes, and then. Um, read the text for uh, seven minutes, underlining the keywords and um, uh, making a uh, making a synonyms next to the uh, par different paragraphs or sections uh, there. Um, and then, um, and ju I'm just multitasking. If I seem a little bit slower, I'm just trying to multitask and share in a whole bunch of groups. It's really a huge amount now. I've shared. Um, so if you are, uh, yes, yeah, so basically read the questions for the reading section, read the questions for three minutes, and then, um, so read the questions for three minutes, and then uh, uh, read the um, uh, text for seven minutes, and underline the keywords in the, in the uh, questions, and underline the uh, keywords in the uh, text. Um, and uh, then answer for seven minutes, uh, and then uh, do two minutes checking and one minute final checking. So normally, for the IELTS reading, the tips I, I recommend are um, uh, the tips I recommend are uh, to um, think about the schedule and also uh, think about the uh, formatting of the text because especially for the academic text which may be something like 2800 words approximately you can't really read it twice so basically you just you can only read it one time and then kind of you know answer and check you can check again but you can't you know it's difficult to read uh, uh, 2800 words twice I think and then answer the questions for even for native speakers they'd be kind of going very fast um, so uh, basically, you know, that's a little bit difficult. Okay, I have a comment. Excellent. So here is a comment from uh, first comment from Atur uh, Rahman. Excellent. Gonna, how do I improve my IELTS writing? I got 5.5 thrice. Oh, terrible. <laughs> I feel sorry for you, uh, really. Um, now, uh, thank you for the question, uh, Atur. Excellent question. Uh, you live in Hyderabad. Oh, uh, interesting, famous city, right, in India. Quite well known. Well, I, even I know it. I don't know India that well, although I have actually lived there for half a year, <laughs> many years ago, but I, I don't particularly know all the cities, or I know a few. Anyway, I've certainly heard of it. It's a famous city for some reason, industrial or whatever. I I'm not sure. Right, okay, excellent question. Uh, now, basically, the first thing you need to do, uh, Artur, and uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name uh, reasonably correctly. Don't uh, I'm not. I don't claim to be anything particularly good at pronunciation for foreign names. Many times. Now, basically, um, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your um, make sure that your handwriting is clear. Uh, if your handwriting is cl is not clear, then you're always probably going to fail the exam if it's if it's not clear enough. Um, so you need to make sure your handwriting is clear, um, and uh, so and also that you can write uh, clearly. Uh, sorry, write uh, quickly and clearly. Um, so a lot of people for the IELTS they don't really kind of focus too much on handwriting. You know, they think, uh, understandably, you know, perhaps when they don't know so much about it, they may say, well, it's just an English exam, but if the examiner can't read it clearly, then um, you know they then uh, basically they're not going to be able to help you to pass uh, really. So now, if anyone else has another question, okay, excellent. I've just got another question here from Artur. I'm going to read the other question uh, or comment. Um, oh, it's oh, it's maybe the same one. Excuse me, but uh, I didn't quite catch that. Right. Okay. So the first thing is make sure your handwriting is clear. And uh, when you're correcting, put a line through the word. Don't overwrite it. 
So you can just put a line through the word and write above it, or you can use a, a pencil with an eraser, and, and, and that will uh, help it as well. Okay, so great question, and I have many other tips I can give as well. Um, now, basically, the key tip is to practice actually writing. If you don't practice writing, um, it's a bit like trying to improve tennis by watching videos and then hoping you're somehow going to get good at tennis just by watching videos. Um, it is, it, of course, um, it's not going to happen. Um, right, okay. Now, I have another question from Usawel. Please suggest some guidebooks for reading, writing, and speaking. Right, I have actually written a free ebook. Um, and so I didn't actually put the link in uh, here, um, but I'll give you the link here. And uh, this is a free ebook I've written, so I'm just going to um, paste it in the group chat here. Now, if you just search, uh, hopefully everyone can see it. If you can't see it, search for IELTS ebook onlineenglishteacher.org, and it should be www.onlineenglishteacher.org. And then IELTS ebook, and it'll basically be on the front page. If you just search for IELTS ebook, you'll be on the front page of of uh, Google normally. Uh, last time I checked, although I'm not sure now. So uh, anyway, you can just message me if you want to get it. But it is free, and it covers a lot. It covers a lot of the uh, the tips uh, in my e courses. But my e courses actually go into a lot more detail. Um, so uh, with you know a lot more example vocabulary or uh, anything like that. Okay, anyway, I'll just come back to the, uh, so check that out, and um, yes, but also I do, uh, if you're interested, uh, I do have e-courses and a support forum, and it's actually 50% discount at the moment, so the link is just uh, here, I'll put the link as well, if you're interested in that, um, hopefully that is the correct link, I've put there, <laughs> and uh, actually I'll just check the correct link, uh, hopefully I should have really, uh, uh, yes, so here we go. it seems to be working, uh, fortunately. Um, okay, right, so yes, so there we go, and uh, so that is the, uh, you can also just check out my e-courses, it's only $25 for one month, it's 50% discount, and you also get, uh, uh, you also get uh, extra discounts if you pay for more months, and it's a free, it's a support forum, if you want to ask me a private question in my support forum, it's free uh, for 20, it's, well, it's not free, but included in the price for 20, only $25 a month, and you can ask me questions in my support forum and access all my e-courses. And if you're not satisfied, I can even refund it after um, 30 days. If you can kind of, you know, just basically, uh, if you're uh, right. Okay, so oh, hang on. I'm going to keep on sharing this into other groups. So, right. Okay, I'm going ahead with Arthur, your questions. And so, so basically, I talked about handwriting. That's a big issue, you know, maybe it's surprising, but I had one student and uh, she was st she got six offline and then she um, uh, studied for with me for one month and she went to eight and we really focused on her handwriting a lot and that was a major issue. So it can be an issue, you know, uh, at least uh, at least half a grade, one grade or whatever uh, minimum with some with some students, not all the students. OK, excellent question, Arthur, and I'm going to keep going with uh, tips for you. Uh, thanks for the book. Yes, my pleasure. Um, now, um, is it uh, uh, now? I'll just go to maybe a few other questions also. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, Usua, how can you improve your handwriting? Basically, you don't probably just you, you just need um, every. Basically, the rule is that every every letter should be clear and every word should be clear to a you know uh, to an English teacher. Um, so not. Uh, you know, so basically, um, there there is um, uh, you can just kind of Google maybe some IELTS handwriting courses online or something like that. Um, and the rule is that every letter should be clear. So you know, so bas basically the rule is if there's a, a young student you know who's ten years old, they should be able to look at the the writing and say, I know what is this letter, I know what is this word. That's just it. Um, that's the key one. So, of course, you can also have a teacher uh, like myself. You know, I, I'm uh, skilled in helping students for, to improve their handwriting, uh, you know, to give advice. And I've helped, uh, as I say, once she went from six to eight uh, in one month, uh, approximately. So, um, okay. 
Now that I'm going to just go ahead and with any other uh, questions uh, here, uh, let me see here. Uh, I'm going to, I'm just keep on, if you keep on hearing me clicking, I'm just sharing other groups. And I've shared probably about uh, 30 groups or something at the moment, I'm guessing, or maybe more. I'm, I don't know, I've lost track. Okay, uh, is it possible to improve writing without uh, a tutor? Yeah, I mean, basically it is, uh, Alina. Um, so it is possible um, to get lots of tips and things like that. Um, but I think there's there's a limit. You know, you can get lots of tips and advice, and you can ask strategy advice, you know, so on, uh, you know, without actually checking your writing. But I think basically really the way to improve uh, is to get IELTS, uh, an IELTS trainer. Um, it's not maybe necessary, it depends on the grade, uh, what, uh, how much you need to improve if you really need that. But I, I mean, you know, I've been teaching online for, I started uh, over um, uh, eight, about 80 years ago, approximately 80 years ago, teaching the IELTS as far as I remember. And, um, uh, or possibly about that. And yes, yeah, so I've taught many, uh, many students to uh, correct, you know, and uh, actually one of my uh, students, she just passed, she was a doctor from Greece and she had failed the arts exam three times, if you can believe it. And then uh, she needed to get 7.5 average and then seven each section. And uh, actually after studying with me, she got um, uh, eight average in seven each section. Um, I, you know, she wanted to take it. I wasn't so sure, but that was about after 18 classes. But she, she was kind of, you know, feeling the exam pressure, and you know, also wanted to kind of pass it if possible, or whatever, perhaps. And uh, anyway, so she, she did do that. So, uh, you know, so that just, so it is very useful to have a teacher. Uh, I mean, I would say that, of course, you know, it's my business, but. Um, you know, I have one student, for example, who just passed, who failed three times before. And I've even had one student who I was teaching about uh, seven and a half years ago who failed it like 15, perhaps 15 or 20 times, and then passed after me after three months' study. So, um, you know, basically, from my experience, it really does help having a teacher um, or some native, te native speaker who knows what they're doing uh, for correcting. They may not be an official teacher or something. Um, because otherwise, how do you know if you're making a mistake, um, you know, for spelling, for grammar, and uh, also the teacher can specifically give suggestions. So probably you can study yourself and probably you could even improve yourself enough to get many grades, even maybe a seven. However, I think it's just much quicker if you have a teacher um, because the teacher can say, okay, you're doing this wrong, you need to change this to this, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, basically, uh, it's just it's just faster, so probably probably everyone could eventually pass, you know, uh, without a teacher. I'm not saying it's not possible, of course. Um, however, just for the faster study, um, I'd probably recommend to have a teacher um, because then they can really just kind of focus in. And also, it may it may although you have to pay a teacher normally, uh, it may be that um, you don't uh, take the exam so many times. So, for example, the student uh, doctor from Greece who'd failed three times before studying with me, uh, she took 18 group classes and then she passed uh, first time with me. So now if she studied herself, um, just herself, maybe she would have taken 10 more exams, who knows, you know, and uh, or, or maybe never passed, um, actually, uh, or, or so, you know, she had already failed it three times before. I think when students have failed it three times before and tried, they may just take a long time to pass, you know, if they're not really... Uh, but but for sure, you know, you can you can pass probably just by yourself, but it'll just take longer, and there's no there's no guarantee. Of course, there's no guarantee with the teacher. It's just that they kind of you know have a, a track record of success sometimes and so. Okay, um, newspaper is a good move for improving reading. This is a question from Ahmed Mazar. I'm going to come back to that, but I'll just try and um, uh, answer the question from Artur. Uh, hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, right, uh, let me see here. Um, okay, uh, right, uh, so the uh, the uh, uh, question from Artur was about improving writing. So think about, I'll just go through various tips quickly then. So think about handwriting, that's a very important tip. You need to practice writing quickly, etc. Uh, also, uh, make synonyms for the question. Before we start writing, make sure you do synonyms. Understand the question clearly. 
uh, think about a clear structure, uh, don't make sentences very short, have them 15 to 25 words. Uh, also, I normally recommend having at least two sentences for each paragraph, although you know there are different styles, this may be just my age, but younger, younger teachers may not think it's such an issue, but I generally think it looks a bit more academic normally to do it. Maybe for the general letter it's not so important perhaps sometimes. Um, also, um, uh, start every sentence with a complex word. I normally recommend, and especially the first sentence, try and impress the examiner. It is a human examiner, of course, uh, not a computer. Uh, this is all tips for the writing. Um, and uh, also, uh, other tips for the writing are um, uh, try, try to put complex words in the middle of the sentences. Try and have complex sentences. Uh, you can Google IELTS Buddy complex sentences. They've got something useful about that. Um, uh, also, uh, try not to repeat too many of your own words, um, and uh, um, <clears throat> uh, yes. So also, um, uh, also, uh, uh, let me think here. Um, uh, other tips are uh, look at model answers. Uh, can be useful. Uh, so look at model answers and. Um, uh, of course, get a teacher to give uh, uh, feedback. So, you know, to to uh, analyze your your uh, uh, your writing, uh, make an Excel sheet also to um, to uh, try and see the errors that you've made, and so you're not repeating them. Um, and uh, um, okay, so that's another thing you can do. Uh, also, um, another tip is to. Um, Mm, let me see, I've uh, gone through various. Um, uh, another tip is to understand the different types of questions. Um, think about the different structure you're going to be using, like four paragraphs. So I only recommend four paragraphs for task two, three paragraphs for task one. Um, and um, uh, another tip is try to make a balance between the paragraphs. Um, try and link the sentences together. Um, I, uh, I normally put my personal opinion in the last paragraph um, and for the examples try and go in a little bit of detail you can say don't just say in Africa maybe it's better to say these countries in Africa I just personally prefer although you know maybe okay just to say Africa uh, they don't perhaps specify so much uh, but uh, definitely give uh, examples solid uh, lit clear examples don't speak too generally is, is perhaps the key issue um, and uh, also um, maybe uh, practice writing with a pen and pencil, of course, and getting up to speed and writing clearly. Uh, okay, Lot and, and probably some other tips as well I could give, uh, I'm guessing. Okay, uh, right, uh, those were tips for writing for Arthur. Let's go ahead for the next uh, question. Uh, are, this is a question from Ahmed uh, Mazar um, and uh, from Lahore, it must be Pakistan, right? And the question is, are newspapers good for improving reading? Uh, sure. Um, the the thing I'd say, Ahmed, is um, you know it's a bit like playing tennis. Like it's good to kind of uh, you know watch videos and go for a run and go down the gym or whatever to get good at tennis. But the best way to get good at tennis is. So. Uh, I know it's a bit difficult um, to. Um, I know it's a little bit difficult to, uh, you know, uh, get hold of lots of different reading exams uh, legally, at least. <laughs> and I certainly don't recommend illegally. And uh, um, basically, with the uh, become familiar with the. Um, um, oops, uh, become familiar with the different types of reading questions uh, is another issue. Um, so yes, yeah, so that that is something to think about. Okay, uh, right. Okay, very good. So I'm trying not to miss any questions here. Um, I'm not sure. Let me just check around. So various uh, comments and likes. Thank you very much, everyone, for liking. Okay, uh, right. Uh, question from. Uh, Ahmed, uh, how to improve IELTS reading band 7. Now, what I said uh, originally, Ahmed, if maybe you just joined after, is uh, for the uh, reading exam, 
um, make sure to uh, there are two I think two main things and the first thing the first main thing is to uh, have like a schedule so basically just have a schedule of time um, and uh, so that uh, you can uh, have, a, have a schedule of time so that you can kind of say three minutes for uh, checking the questions, seven minutes for uh, checking the text, uh, you know, underline the questions, underline the text, um, then uh, seven minutes for uh, answering, two minutes checking, and one minute final check. So that would be uh, something to do. Uh, also, have a strategy for formatting the text. You know, the questions, when you read the questions, you could underline keywords and put bullet points next to the text so that you know what uh, text to look out for. Uh, also, have a strategy for underlining, for uh, formatting the text, because you can't really read the text twice in, uh, certainly for the academic, uh, perhaps for the general it's a bit easier if it's shorter text, but it's very difficult to read the academic twice, uh, even for me, for any teacher in the world, you know, perhaps there'll be, you know, a lot of, a lot of us will have a big challenge reading it twice, and then also answering the questions in 20 minutes. So basically, when you read the, que when you read the text, underline the keywords and then make bullet points like a few different bullet points next to each paragraph uh, for the academic or each section or whatever for the general I'm not quite so familiar with the foot layout for them I haven't seen so many uh, perhaps uh, but I've seen you know some at least and um, um, so basically then when you answer the questions you can then look uh, if, if a bullet point is like you make a bullet point about food and then a question is about food you can quickly go to the to the uh, the paragraph it's about so I think the two key issues are make a schedule and uh, also underline the uh, the bullet points. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, underline the um, uh, the paragraphs. Make bullet points uh, next to the uh, paragraphs or the sections, you know, for the uh, general whatever. Um, so that when you need when you need to go back at kind of high speed um, and uh, trying to um, uh, trying to you know locate um, the uh, the uh, uh, the paragraph you need at high speed um, then if you've underlined the uh, if you've underlined the um, uh, uh, paragraphs then you can kind of you know just quickly check it again and that can help okay um, how much does arts writing task one matter in the band um, I, sh I think I've heard of it and um, I I think somebody uh, I'm not sure if I heard this incorrectly, but it's maybe like a third uh, of the grade, 33% um, approximately. I may, I may not be right exactly, uh, but I maybe heard that from students, and I don't know if they knew it exactly. Um, but I think it may be about a third of the grade. So it's about, um, you need to write at least 150 words, and then 250 words for task two. So I'm not sure if it's if it's like a third or 40% or something like that. So 33 to 40%. Um, you can probably Google that. Maybe it's on IELTS Lids. I may have read it there, and I've just forgotten uh, what it was. But it's about th it's about a third to forty percent, something like that. Um, but uh, yes, right. Um, so okay, excellent. Now, uh, hi everyone. Uh, this is uh, Philip from England, and I'm a UK native uh, English speaker. And if you have any questions about the IELTS, please go ahead and ask. And I'm happy to answer. I first started teaching the IELTS exam about uh, seven years ago sorry eight years ago right uh, 2009 so about eight years ago uh, something like May 2009 perhaps if my memory is correct so coming up to about eight years and I've helped uh, I taught many students and helped quite a lot uh, pass I guess uh, so um, right so if you have a question about the IELTS uh, I was born and went to school in England and uh, I also have uh, my web my website is onlineenglishteacher.com if you're interested in any paid services as well I have like e-courses which have a 50% discount they're only $25 a month or less um, and uh, if you want to buy those and um, uh, also I uh, have a support forum for students if you want to buy that and I have uh, various free stuff like, like free arts ebook uh, uh, free forum which I post in but don't always correct in you know don't, wouldn't have time for that uh, but I do post in it, uh, like this free webcast and things like that, um, and uh, also other free materials. So I have some free stuff and also some paid stuff like Skype classes, e-courses, forum, um, if, uh, for anyone who's interested in that. And also writing correction as well by email. 
Okay, I'm just going to check, uh, write a new comments, excellent, uh, from uh, uh, Usman Bhatt. Uh, that sounds like someone from... Uh, what, uh, how would you suggest the uh, listening exam for the IELTS? Right, Good, a great question, Usman. Um, f uh, you know, I've been teaching the IELTS, I started about eight years ago, approximately, or just under, uh, about eight, or maybe, who knows, maybe it was about eight years ago, I don't know, when I first started. Now, for the writing and the speaking, and I've looked at lots of advice online in those in those time in that time trying to increase my knowledge. Now, for the writing and speaking, there's a whole lot of uh, advice that we can give. For the um, for the reading, there's a li uh, much less, and for the listening, I think there's even less uh, that, that I've found. So I'll just tell you the tips uh, that I can uh, remember of hand. Uh, the first tip is, of course, just do lots of exams to and become familiar with the question types and also in the exam there'll be different accents you know different ages um, there may be I think they said before it's something I can't don't don't count this as 100% accurate it's something like the accents can be from North America the UK uh, Australasia meaning Australia and New Zealand and maybe also South Africa uh, but because it's a British exam they probably uh, or I'm not sure exactly but I'm guessing they may be mostly from uh, the UK, uh, although, you know, maybe it'll change or whatever it has changed, you know, I don't listen too much uh, for the regular stuff, but, uh, okay, so basically, um, first thing is do lots of practice exams, and also try to just become familiar with different a accents, and, you know, probably mainly the British, perhaps, but you, you could just check it out yourself, the most recent exams, if you've been listening and buying them, and then you could just hear what they're saying, uh, but basically, it won't all be like you know some man uh, about my age speaking right it'll probably be younger people older older people uh female different accents not just from england etc so um so be aware of that so do do lots of exams understand the question types follow the instructions very carefully one of the top tips i can give is just reading ahead so if you read ahead the question and the question uh, the questions and the question will be something like which month, which season, or what number, whatever, then you can anticipate that and you know you need to listen out for a you know, month, season, number, whatever. So that's probably one of the main tips. Uh, also understand the listening exam format. Um, it's uh, 30 minutes and then 10 minutes uh, where you can actually, you can make notes on the note paper and then transfer them to the uh, answer sheet. Uh, also there are four sections and uh, from memory, you know, this may be like uh, one dialogue and you know, these kind of things. Uh, actually, I think the tips are my free ebook, so I can give the uh, tips for my free ebook here as well. And uh, I have written a free ebook, uh, but my e-courses go into you know a lot more de uh, quite a lot more detail for tip vocabulary tips, etc. Um, so here is a free ebook. I've also written. Uh, I'm just putting it. If you just search for IELTS ebook or IELTS ebook or online English teacher dot org, uh, you can get uh, a lot of uh, tips for that as well. Okay, uh, right, um, okay, so yeah, that's for that. Uh, other, uh, other ones, as I said, very important, just make sure you read the questions uh, exactly and follow the instructions, you know, they say such and such words, such and such numbers, whatever. Uh, also understand the question types. Um, I can't remember from memory, I think, is it for, uh, something like eight question types for reading and I'm not sure something similar for listening, 12, or whatever. Um, but just listen out for the uh, different um, uh, question type. Uh, sorry, learn about the different question types, and that can help as well. Uh, so that basically in the exam, you're not kind of just uh, trying to, you know, think about. You know, you, you don't need to have time for processing that. Basically, you can just go straight ahead, and you know, you know what you're going to be listening for. Um, the other thing I said is uh, just uh, try to become familiar with the exam. Um, you know, it's it's a bit difficult. You know, getting um, it's quite expensive actually buying the uh, different uh, material for for the IELTS listening and reading. I know there's some free stuff online, not a huge amount, but there is some. Um, so basically, um, yeah. So basically, uh, just uh, uh, listen out for the uh, for the different uh, uh, question types. So that can be useful, um, and uh, be, become familiar with them, and, and then that can help as well for the processing time. Okay, uh, hi everyone. I can see there are 17 people in the in the uh, group at the moment, or, or there were. It's just gone down a little bit. So this is uh, Philip from OnlineEnglishTeacher.com. 
Uh, if you have a question about the IELTS exam, please go ahead and ask. I first started teaching it about eight years ago, <clears throat> and um, I've taught very many, you know, quite a lot of students to pass. My last student, she got eight average, seven each section. She failed it three times before and passed the first time with me. So uh, I also have free resources like a free ebook. I just uh, may have to put the link in the Skype chat. And uh, I do have a free forum where I don't uh, always answer, but I'll give the link for that uh, if anybody is interested. I do have a free forum where uh, I am not always answering, but I do post in it. You know, if I answered, I'd only be answering for free, basically. So that's not very easy. I do need a salary. Um, so, okay, uh, right. Okay, so there we go. Um, right, I'm just checking to see if there are any questions that are coming in. If you have a question about the IELTS, please do ask. Um, and uh, right, let me see if any questions. A uh, question from Zawi Zadu. Uh, as I w want band eight overall, how much struggle it demands? Like how much daily? Okay, this is an excellent question. Uh, and also, there's another question from uh, Loreb Moid and. Uh, so just uh, uh, add you to friends uh, there. And uh, oh, by the way, if anyone wants to uh, follow me on uh, the on uh, Facebook, uh, my business page, I will put that now into the chat window and you can just follow my business page here. And uh, so um, and then kind of get updates if you just want to kind of keep updated about things <clears throat> and free things as well. Like the free, I have a free forum as well. Uh, right, okay, so a couple of questions here. Hope it's the correct day. Yes, right. <laughs> Not answering another webinar's questions. So, um, okay, the question is um, just trying to locate that. Uh, hopefully, I haven't lost that. Uh, trying to locate it. Uh, right, okay. Uh, so, I'll just go with uh, Lorey Moit, uh, who is new. a new question here. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, the question is how, how important is a good uh, IELTS test score for international universities. I mean, if you already have a good SAT score. Well, uh, now I'm not a um, I'm not uh, a uh, you know I'm not a career consultant, but I have been teaching the IELTS for eight, for about eight years, so I have become a little bit familiar. Um, basically, um, it may depend on each university and also sometimes which country you're coming from. I think uh, students from Saudi Arabia they seem to be very popular with the universities, and they don't need such a uh, high score so, uh, so much. Um, now, it may depend, probably, I think most universities in the UK, I'm kind of guessing, <clears throat> but just from my experience, um, that all I've ever heard is they normally want something like the IELTS. But it may be, it, maybe it's changing, maybe they'll, you know, allow something else as well. So, um, but and normally the grades will be, people from Saudi Arabia, they normally have a very uh, good agreement. So it's maybe something like 5.5 or 5. And uh, if you're going to study at Cambridge or Oxford, you know, maybe 6.5 or 7.5 or something like that. Um, but basically, I recommend just contacting the British Council uh, in your country. Just Google British Council in your country. Probably you heard of that. And uh, then you can kind of just get some advice uh, from those guys. Um, so, okay. Right. Uh, excellent question. Very, very well done. Uh, right. Uh, next question is from um, uh, Sh uh, Shobit Kumar. Uh, the question is, is writing 5.5 .5 acceptable? Um, it kind of depends what for. Like if you're going to go and work in Australia and you have a very high level skill, one of my students uh, actually passed with me a few months back um, who really didn't have any English at all and somehow it, with me, we, he got 5.5. .5. I don't know who was more surprised, him or me, that he passed, but uh, he kind of had an intensive class, and an intensive course. And uh, yeah, so that was um, that's possible. But that guy really didn't speak much English. I hope he didn't. Doesn't mind me saying. I think he, he must know it. Um, oh, certainly for writing, it was just really, really beginner level. Anyway, somehow he passed for me, uh, uh, very fortunately. And uh, so, um, but I, I think it just depends. You know, for universities uh, in the UK, you may be able to get 5.5 .5 if you're from something like Saudi Arabia. Or if you're going to quite a minor university, but I think a major university, they may need something higher, six, sevens, whatever. Um, I think students have told me over the years what grade they need. Um, and oh, Oxford or Cambridge, you know, that may be the highest. But I, I think even then, you may not need always seven or seven point five from memory. Although I couldn't really say 100 percent. Okay, uh, right, uh, excellent question. Um, right, and uh, going ahead for the next question, or is there a next question? Uh, how do you how do I improve my 
Now, also, uh, yes, yeah, so students, uh, Arthur, it's, it's kind of gone off the screen somehow uh, here. But uh, basically, uh, now, uh, can I actually, oh, 20, oh, here we go. So 21 comments. Oh, there we go. So I kind of try and see if I can find these now. Uh, right. Okay, excuse me. I seem to miss these. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go through all the old questions I may have missed. Um, thanks for the book. Is it possible to improve writing without a tutor? Hand proof reading bands uh, kind of gone over that. Um, okay, I don't know. If someone's posting about their free e course. I'm going to hide that. Uh, I don't know. I don't normally. I'm not sure. Anyway, okay. Newspaper. Um, sorry if it was a free without anything commercial. I don't know. How much writing? Uh, okay, how hard does it get to band eight? Uh, yeah, it's quite. It's quite hard to get a band eight. You know. Uh, actually, uh, this is a question from uh, Usman Butt, and uh, excellent question here. How is how hard is it to get a band eight? You know, and uh, basically, you know, I've been teaching the arts for many years, and most students never need to get a band eight. You know, they may set it as a goal or something, but they don't actually need to get it. Um, so, um, basically, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry you know too much about uh, trying to get a band eight as your goal because. Most people wouldn't do it. In fact, I can say some native speakers will not get a band eight. Maybe that's quite surprising. Like uh, I was working with a medical agency a while back, and uh, one of the people I was speaking to, she was, I think she was a native speaker from Australia, and she couldn't get a seven or something in reading. Um, so, you know, it's definitely not easy. Um, so just, it just uh, does depend on the, uh, uh, on the uh, goal of the student. Okay, uh, right, okay. Uh, so, uh, well, you, you want eight overall. So it's maybe, I mean, it's very difficult. Uh, however, the last student who passed with me about eight days ago, they got their result. They did get a band eight, uh, band eight average. Um, and uh, they got eight average and then 70 section minimum. So it is possible, you know, it's, uh, as I say, one of my students, she failed three times before she passed the first time with me. But I think, I think you need to be a bit philosophical that uh, you know, um, okay, so yeah, it's a little bit, you need to be a bit philosophical and a bit, uh, you know, uh, so uh, realistic, basically, that eight is difficult. And I'd say that even um, like a native speaker uh, from the UK, many, many of them may not get eight. And the reason, the reason is, you know, it's just, it's difficult. You know, the arts exam is difficult to really go so fast and really get such a high, a high grade there. So uh it, it's it's difficult however if you have the right strategy and you know probably a teacher is very important to get such a high grade um it's it's maybe possible so and also if you have very good english you know basically the 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 best way to the the two key things for, for taking the ielts now it's not a guarantee you know because sometimes the the examiners are not good or whatever but uh the best way to pass the ielts is to understand and practice and then have good english you know um, so basically, people who have good English, they, they generally do better. And uh, also, people who don't have uh, good English, they generally do worse. Um, and uh, also, um, having a strategy is very important, you know. So perhaps I could say that if someone has like a certain level and then another student has like a, 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 another level, um, basically, the person with the best strategy, if they're a little bit close, the person with the best strategy will probably get a higher grade. You know, if if they've been practicing and the other student hasn't been practicing and things like that, um, so basically strategy is is very important. Uh, how and, and 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 then there's also chance. You know, uh, like I've had some people contact me and say, you know, or, or maybe one or more, and they said, you know, my friend has bad English and they passed, you know, first time with high grade or whatever. I mean, it can happen. You know, the grading can be just too uh, easier and uh, not not correct. Uh, but basically. You know, um, I mean, the thing is, it is possible by chance. If you take the exam a hundred times and have bad English, you could get an okay grade or you know whatever. But most people don't want to spend their time hoping for chance, right? They, so the best way to understand to pass the exam is to understand it, and to do lots of practice, and to um, and to uh, have good English, right? So it's just simple. Um, so that's just the best the best way uh, to do it. And and I think that's. Kind of probably very similar to a lot of other things. Like if you want to get good at tennis, understand the strategy, uh, practice, um, and uh, and then get good, and then you're probably going to do quite well. I'm guessing uh, is the uh, basic logic, isn't it? Um, okay, uh, right. So uh, now I'm just um, 
posting uh, into other groups in case anyone else wants to join. So, uh, Brian, I'm just checking for more questions. Uh, so, uh, if anyone has any more uh, questions about the IELTS, uh, please go ahead and ask. And uh, uh, I'm ready to answer. So, uh, just seeing what are the questions coming are the um, okay. And uh, also, uh, I do also have a free ebook if anyone would like to download that. Um, so, I'll just make a, a link for that. And also, I do have a free uh, forum. Uh, I'm not always, you know, I do post in the forum, but, you know, obviously I can't always just answer in the free forum because I also have other, you know, paid students and things like that. Um, but um, so it wouldn't be practical just all, all the time just, uh, working in a free forum. I need a salary somehow, I guess. Um, anyway, so basically, I, I, at the moment, anyway, I'm not always just uh, answering the free forum, but I'm posting in the free forum and sometimes giving comments and tips or something like that as well to some replies. Um, Okay, so I have a, also a free uh, a forum here as well, um, and uh, so if anyone wants to join that, um, you can join that. And oh, and also I have uh, uh, paid e-courses. Um, my website is onlineenglishteacher.com, um, and there's a 50% discount, so it's $25 for a month for my e-courses, and even cheaper if you pay for more months. And there is also a free support forum, so if you want to ask a question, I can you know, basically guarantee to answer any questions as long as it's not like a hundred a day, so I kind of write legal, like I may stop this, and that was kind of with that in mind, if someone's just posting like a, a ton of, a huge amount of questions, you know, obviously I need to do other things than just answer one person's questions all, all, all my time. Um, okay, anyway, so yes, but if you're interested in that, um, you can kind of uh, just go ahead and uh, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, if you're interested in $25 a month, uh, maybe not a huge amount in my e-courses and free support forum. Okay, uh, very good. So. Um, right, I can't see any more uh, people uh, questions, but if anyone has a question, please go ahead and ask. Uh, this is Philip from England. I'm a UK native speaker, and I have first started teaching the IELTS about eight years ago, uh, approximately. And um, um, okay, so and I've just seen another questions come in. Yes, and if you have a question, uh, please go ahead and ask and write it. And uh, this is free to answer and. Uh, I will then go ahead and uh, do my best to try and answer the question uh, from my experience and as much as I uh, as I can help. Right, um, just writing in here um, that uh, to other groups. Um, so uh, let's see here. Um, okay, so I'm just typing in here. Uh, okay, right. The next question that's just come in in other groups. I'm just sharing a link still. So. Uh, right, the next question that has just come in is, uh, okay, uh, how can I improve my writing? And also, there's a question for Larib, and uh, this is a very interesting question here. Uh, the question is, uh, can you just quickly go through the test pattern? Yeah, excellent question. Uh, so basically, there are four sections, uh, reading, speaking, listening, and writing. And um, uh, basically, the listening has four sections. Um, and uh, it is 40 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, and then 10 minutes transferring to the answer sheet. The reading section has three sections. It's 60 minutes, and uh, it may be very daunting. You know, it's like sometimes uh, eight or 900 words, or approximately, for each task times three, 2,700 words, approximately, or 800 for the academic. Uh, so very daunting. Um, then uh, there is the um, and then you have 40 questions in total, and also, from memory, I think it's 40 questions for listening, um, just uh, as far as I remember. Uh, then also there is the uh, writing section, and there are, uh, there are two sections, task one, task two. The task one, you need to write a minimum 150 words. The task two, uh, minimum 250 words. Um, and uh, that's for 60 minutes, so there's 20 minutes for task one, 40 minutes for task two. Um, and uh, then there is the, uh, the speaking exam. And the speaking exam has three sections. It has introduction, like warm-up questions, like how are you, what do you do, where you're from. Then it has a cue card, which you prepare for one minute and speak for one to two minutes. And then there are follow-up questions. In theory, follow-up questions, although, you know, having taught this over eight, uh, starting from about eight years ago, I've seen sometimes the, uh, the uh, follow-up questions, they kind of go a little bit off, uh, off uh, the agenda, uh, off the, um, uh, away from the cue card. Um, Okay, so yes, so basically uh, there's that. 
Um, and then there's also the general and the academic exam. Uh, the academic is maybe something like for a doctor or for a study university, and whereas the uh, sorry, uh, and whereas the general uh, will be for um, uh, will be for uh, like immigration maybe. Um, and there's no limit to the amount of times you can take it. It's a bit of an expensive exam, I think, for a lot of people. You know, it, it depends on the country, but sometimes it's about $200, $250. I've heard even it's $400. One of my students, uh, uh, one time from, um, uh, from uh, let's see, what's the uh, country next to uh, Haiti? Um, and uh, Dominican Republic. And uh, I should know that. And, uh, yes, yeah, so basically... It can be quite expensive, and uh, it can take a lot of time to prepare. Um, so I, I've heard, you know, like really terrible stories. Like I've heard of someone failing it 50 times. So one of my, someone contacted me and just took a few classes, and I think they're taking it 25 times before they contacted me. And um, and then I've uh, they, uh, they didn't continue. I think I don't know if they spent all their money on exams or something. And then they had a friend who'd failed it 50 times. Apparently, one of my students. Um, one of my first students, about seven and a half years ago, he failed it like 15 or 20 times before he contacted me and for about a year and a quarter, taking it once or twice a month. And then he actually passed. This was one of my first students. He passed actually, like I think after about uh, three months. And I think he was still taking it with me like two, at least two or three times, but this was one of my first students. But he did pass with me. Um, and uh, so basically, uh, I think the key issue, you know, and basically, his wife passed it the first time, and he failed it 20 times before contacting me, and then passed after a few months study with me. Um, so basically, the thing about the IELTS is some people pass the first time, and some people pass after a few times, and some people take a whole lot of times. You know, I, I don't know the percentage. People probably don't go and write an internet forum saying, "Hey, I failed it 20 times." You know, do you have a question or something? They're not going to maybe be a little bit uh, embarrassed, although you know they shouldn't be if they tried seriously. But anyway. So some people pass the first time, and uh, there's also a bit of chance, you know, so, uh, for the writing and speaking. It's just different examiners. Probably if you get a hundred different examiners, you know, the, the for, for speaking and writing, it's going to be going up and down. Um, and also you can get a regrade, which can take, I think, minimum three weeks and sometimes more. And sometimes there's an automatic rechecking if they think, you know, everybody got too an easier, too easy and too easier uh, a grade. Um, so that's kind of an overview. And there's no limit to the number of uh, times you can take the IELTS. You can just keep taking it as long as you've got money to keep paying for it. It's going to be very expensive. And uh, the, grade, the grade normally takes about 13 days to, uh, to get the result. Um, so, um, however, it can be longer, as I said, uh, if, uh, if uh, basically um, if there's a security check or whatever. And... Um, and then there's also most uh, the IELTS exam is also a traditional exam, um, so basically it's normally uh, on uh, on paper. Uh, however, uh, if you have a disability, you know your vision's not clear or something, uh, then you can kind of um, you can kind of go ahead and uh, um, <clears throat> uh, you can go ahead and uh, uh, basically um, uh, you know you can go ahead and. Uh, um, and uh, you need to ask in advance, but then you can basically uh, get a um, uh, a uh, computer usage. Uh, one of my students, she did have computer usage actually, although she never she never ever did homework. I think uh, this was the issue. I told her again and again, uh, but some other issues there, whatever they were. Okay, um, I think basically never homework. Right. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, excellent question there. I hope that uh, uh, covered it and. Uh, yeah, so basically one of the one of the key issues uh, differences between the TOEFL and the IELTS is the IELTS you know normally uses a pen and paper, so this is something that really does help to practice doing it right, uh, doing it writing quickly, and also thinking about correcting and things like that. Okay, uh, right. So there we go. Um, and uh, let me see what else. Um, I'm just kind of sharing. Right, if anyone has a question, please go ahead quickly. I'll probably start to wrap it up. I think it's already been uh, an hour. Uh, fantastic, a lot of fantastic questions here. Uh, brilliant, well done, everybody. And uh, if you have any uh, questions you'd like to ask, uh, please 
kind of get them in quick, and then I will try and answer one or two more uh, before uh, wrapping up. Right. If any, maybe everybody has uh, had their answers, their questions answered. But if not, uh, right. Okay. A uh, comment from um, Rajan Arora. I got two five, two times five in writing, and in other modules I got six point five. Yes, yeah, so basically, I definitely just recommend checking your handwriting uh, or having your handwriting checked by a teacher and just working on making it clear. Also, writing quickly. Um, I'm assuming you're using a, a paper. Most people do. Um, this is really a big skill. Most people kind of don't realize it until they actually take the exam. It's like, oh yeah, you know, it's it's use it or lose it, right? Is the expression. So uh, basically, when uh, when people don't write, you know, for many years uh, with um, with a pen or paper, and then uh, it's like you know, it's like um, not riding a bicycle for ten years, and then suddenly going a bike race. It's it's not going to be very easy. <laughs> Probably you know what you're doing, but uh, uh, you know it's kind of um, it's going to be difficult, right? So just uh, do as much practice as you can. Uh, try to get up the speed. Very 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 important. And uh, also practice, you know, using line paper like in the exam, um, and uh, that can really help. Okay, uh, right, so I don't know if anyone else has any questions, otherwise I'll wrap up shortly. And I'm just still sharing in a few forums. And, uh, um, okay, so improve your IELTS. So that'd be a good one to one of the forums I'm in. So I'll just share that there. Uh, right, going to check for any more questions which are coming in. Oh, probably I better stop doing that because I've got a warning message from uh, Facebook saying not to, you know, maybe I'm doing too many. Okay, uh, right. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. This uh, is uh, Philip from England, and I'm a UK native speaker. My website is, I'll get my head out of the way, onlineenglishteacher.com. So please do check it out if you're interested in paid Skype classes, writing correction, e courses. Um, and I actually have a discount at the moment, it's 50% discount, so it's $25 my e-courses and support forum where, well, where I kind of you know guarantee that myself or another teacher will be answering questions uh, as long as you're not answering like asking a huge amount a day in which case you may be banned and I'll refund the money but uh, uh, basically yes so um, there are e-courses and a private support forum if you're interested also Skype classes writing correction as well as well as the e-courses and private forum and uh, the e-courses e and private forum are free actually when you buy Skype classes as well um, and I also have free material like a free um, a free forum and a free ebook. I'll just uh, put the uh, uh, link actually for the uh, uh, ebook. I have a free ebook here as well, and please do download that if you'd like. And um, I'll put the link here in the for the free ebook uh, in the uh, group chat now. Um, and uh, that's my free ebook. And also I have a free forum which I don't you know I don't. Uh, guarantee that I'm going to be answering all the questions or I do post in there um, and uh, let me see where's that um, okay and also okay I'm just gonna put that here and also if anyone's interested you know for any questions about anything um, I'll give my email and also my Skype ID where I'm always kind of online when I'm working uh, so this is my free uh, um, uh, this is my free uh, IELTS forum and uh, so there is that and also I'll give my email and um, my Skype ID if anybody is interested so uh, here is my Skype ID and uh, Skype ID is IELTS online English teacher and email is uh, info at online English teacher .com. and finally please do add me on uh, Facebook here's my uh, company page if you'd like to add me thank you very much for all the excellent questions uh, I've had a great time and great to uh, communicate with some of you and hope to see some online. Have a fantastic day. Thank you very much.